So thanks to uh, very excellent timekeeping. Thank you all. We have a few minutes for questions and uh, responses from the panel. Before we have our first set of OEP awards for uh, high achieving schools, I see a bunch of students coming in now who might be getting those awards. Any questions as we uh, in, in the uh, five minutes or so interim? Michael? Thank you. So it seems uh, one thing that is in common with all of the presentations that you gave is that you're raising expectations for students in one way or another. And you've made a great point to say that you're not targeting the highest achieving students to begin with. So I was wondering if any of the three of you could comment on what do you think the mechanism is that makes raising expectations for students that may already be behind so successful? What we, what we see is that if you, make, if you make the learning authentic, then what you discover is that students become engaged. Um, our Sonora kids, the weather balloon, were working with a math instructor from Northwest Arkansas Community College last week because in fourth grade they don't have quite enough trigonometry to be able to um, explain exactly the heights of that balloon as it took that path. Those students in fourth grade are all bright-eyed and eager. In tenth grade, they're all dull-eyed and bored. But they're the same kids. We don't have a problem with student intelligence or student creativity. We have a problem with turning that tap on. Because they're being intelligent and they're being creative, whether for good things or for bad things, what you have to do is find opportunities inside the school day and inside the educational system to bring that out in a positive light. And when you do it, in our case, by giving them access to the community, giving them access to things that they care about, what you're doing is you're giving them a passion for learning and for succeeding and for doing. And so the more authentic you can make it, the more real you can make it, and the more that they can see success and results, honest to goodness, real results, things that they can touch, the greater the chance are that they're going to pay attention in math class or that they're going to write better letters or that they're going to do all those things that we want them to do and that they can find their way because we want them to be successful as adults but right now we're trying to prepare them to do to take on colleges careers and even fields of study that in many cases are this big right now but they're in 10 years they're going to explode or they don't even exist right now. So how do you prepare them to do that? You, you help them wire their brains so that they're excited to learn. And that's not a question of IQ. Um, just to um, touch a little bit on what Matt said, what we call that um, at Caracas County is just student context. Um, that we talk about from a, the teacher's perspective, this shouldn't be engaging to the teacher you've got to find ways to make it engaging to kids. And if you make it engaging for kids, then kids are going to learn at high levels. And, you know, sometimes that's a challenge. Sometimes in a math class, when you're um, teaching a concept that maybe there's not a lot of real world application, it makes it more difficult. But that's where the best teachers shine. Just very quickly, uh, relevance is key bringing that reference points to the students and what is the reference point and where can I use this as I continue to move forward. Very key to have outstanding and energetic teachers in a classroom. You, you, can't, you can't replace that. We have the good fortune, a lot of our folks are extremely excited about what they do. That translates to those kids and they pick it up. One of the things that we brought to the table this year with this program, which has just shown phenomenal success and folks are raving about it, is online prep sessions. Because this program, I didn't mention, but requires some prep sessions for the kids so that they can be better prepared for those examinations. Well, instead of doing all that face-to-face, -face, which was part of the program before, this year with six pilot districts, because we were paying for it out of our dollars, we put online prep sessions five days a week, one-hour sessions, live with our content specialist talking about key particular items in those subject areas that we're going to better prepare these kids. And you all know sitting in this room that kids eat the technology up. They're online all the time. 
We had this in the evening. We rotated them at different time slots. We served in, we, pi we piloted with six districts, but we had 34,000 students across the state that tapped into those online prep sessions. The other beauty of that is they do the live sessions, and then every one of those sessions was also recorded so they could go back on their mobile device, on a pad, whatever they had, and access that at any point in time. So relevance to their level of understanding and learning and that practical application is always going to be key factors. Uh, thank you all. We have about one minute left. I'd like to take the chair's prerogative and ask one final question. Uh, you, you provide a very compelling case that this is easy to engage kids. In fact, this is more engaging than what we normally do for kids. However, most of us who are teachers have been trained to teach perhaps differently. So it's easy to transfer the kids to this mode. How in the world do you work with the adults? Start. We have one, <clears throat> one minute to yes. answer that. Can you do that? I'm going to go ahead and speak seconds. for both of them then. Yeah. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah. Um, I think that um, you have to have teachers that are committed to doing it initially. Um, you know, we, we, made a, we made a promise to our teachers that we would provide the professional development, the opportunities, the coaching to help them get there, but it wasn't a choice of whether or not we were going there. Uh, that's a commitment that the administration made and the school board. And so that means that it's a whole lot more work on the front end, as I said before, to prepare the environment that is engaging to kids. And it's just like the real world. It's monitor and adjust as you go through the process. Um, but when you think back to when you were in school, the best teachers that you have, they were engaging. They kept you engaged. And now what we're trying to do is systematically teach teachers how to do that in classrooms to make it where student engagement is not just in the best teacher's classrooms, um, but is in all. And I think the only way that we do that is we, one of the things we have to change is at the um, higher ed level that we've got to take, um, change teacher education programs to making it where it's not about the sage on the stage giving all the information um, to the students who are sponges and soaking it up because that's not reality. It's not happening in university classrooms and it's not ha happening in high school classrooms. And so we've got to do that and at the same time we've got to provide opportunities for our teachers in the schools that are already um, in, in, in the line of work um, to be able to change. Just to echo some of the same things that, that Matt had indicated, but what we found is that success breeds success. Excitement grows. And you've got to showcase those things. You've got to model them. You've got to encourage people. And you've got to create that sense of excitement across your campus. And when you're having success, you need to make sure that everybody knows about it. And those are things that you know, are, are key to changing the environment on a campus and a climate on a campus. Uh, emphatically agree. We, we need to blow up the preparation programs. You know, I had a tendency to often say some pretty controversial things when I was commissioner, which I, I felt were relevant to moving the needle and pushing the envelope. Preparation programs are nowhere near what these kids need and what they gravitate to now in terms of learning style and operation. And that's a big missing void. But it's not only in Arkansas, it's across this country. We need to change the way that we prepare teachers so that they are ready to meet the learning styles and opportunities that kids bring to the classroom. What we tell the teachers is nobody goes into education because they want to do bus duty, bathroom duty, or fill out forms. They go into education because they want to work with students and help them succeed. Whether they want to do that because that's where they found success or because they're trying to get back at all those teachers that made their life so miserable is irrelevant. What we've got to do is tap into the things that allow them to help those students succeed. We know that the professional development is the key, and I will challenge Dr. James, because I believe we have the strongest professional development program in the universe. <laughs> um, but our, the East professional development model for, for our facilitators and in our sister program, the East Core program, is not a three-day workshop in which somebody gets up and tells them what a great job they have and how they're changing lives. It's an ongoing process. We have phased training 
that happens over the course of a year that is very intensive, but then we have ongoing both on the ground at the schools and then gathered together at both our East Conference and our summer seminar for our facilitators that happens ongoing from as long as they're a part of the program. That is entirely built around the idea that you can't teach it all to them in one gulp. And in many cases, you can't teach it to them anyway. You've got to bring it out of them because they want to do it in the first place. They want to be engaging. Um, in our East Corps program, we're now working on the frozen model. It's a five-step program that ends at let it go. Let the kids do it. Okay. You sing that? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, thank you. Almost on cue, uh, Matt mentioned we don't want to we don't want to just do Sage on the stage, but we want to model interactivity. And our next session will actually model interactivity with Caesar Mickens. But before we have that next session, we're going to do two things. We're going to thank the board, and then we're going to honor some schools. So let's first thank the panel. And now we're going to hand out some OEP awards and uh, get some coffee if you'd like. Our next